Hello, I'm Tom and Homi from Dell EMC. In this demonstration video, I'll be showing the new Dell EMC Parscale CSI 1.3 installation on Red Hat OpenShift using the new operator framework and cover the new features we've just released in this version. The CSI driver for Dell EMC Parscale implements an interface between CSI enabled container orchestrator and the Dell EMC Parscale storage systems. This allows dynamically provisioning parse-scale volumes and attaching them to workloads. The highlights of this release include qualification for OpenShift 4.4 and Kubernetes 17, 18, and 19, including volume expansion and volume snapshot support. With that, let's start. In the previous demo, I showed you how to install the new DDMC operator via the OpenShift operator hub. At this stage, now that the Dell EMC operator is installed, we are ready to deploy the Parscale CSI driver. From the OpenShift console, we click on Installed Operators and then on the Dell CSI operator. Here, we can see a list of all the available CSI drivers we can deploy using this operator. We go to the Parscale box and then click on Create Instance. Here, we need to specify the relevant details about our environment before installing the driver. The driver parameters are still labeled as the previous name of the product, Isilon. Under ISI endpoint, we enter the address of our Parscale OneFS API server. Under ISI port, we enter the port number of the Parscale OneFS API server. Under ISI path, we enter the base path for the volumes to be created. Under ISI quota enabled, we can set it to true or false to enable smart quotas. Smart quotas allows administrator to control and limit storage usage across the cluster. Using smart quotas, administrators can assign quotas that seamlessly partition the highly scalable single shared pool of storage. ISI Access Zone is the name of the access zone a volume can be created in. We also need to edit the endpoint IP and the path under the storage class and the snapshot class. Now we can click on Create to install the driver. As you can see, within a few seconds, our driver is up and running. We can see that a new storage class has been created. And if we navigate to the pods view, we can see the Parscale controller pod and the node pods, which are deployed on each and every worker node. By navigating to the OneFS UI and clicking on the File System Explorer, we can see that a new directory has been created as part of the driver installation. Now, we are ready to discover the driver features. The first feature is Read Write Many Volume. Kubernetes allows us to provision our persistent volumes dynamically using persistent volume claims. The access modes are read-write once, read-only many, and read-write many. While the first two modes are supported by almost any storage CSI using FC or iSCSI, the third option requires NFS file system. A developer can use one of the first two options to dynamically provision block storage volumes for containerized applications in Kubernetes. However, applications can sometimes require data to be persisted and shared across multiple pods. A clustered web application or database is one of the most common use cases these days. With this type of architecture, shared persistent storage is imperative to achieving the flexibility for scaling. The read write many access modes in Kubernetes persistent volume can be used to make sure replicas in different nodes can access the same volumes. The Parscale CSI driver simplifies dynamic storage provisioning on Kubernetes nodes that provide the persistent volumes for these clustered applications. And of course, it supports read write only and read write many modes. Now, I'm going to create a new Nginx deployment. This deployment is configured to use the persistent volume claim NFS data and mount it at slash data with read write many access mode. 
In the PVC definition, you can see the storage class name is set to our parscale cluster. This tells the cluster to provide this storage using the rules of the NFS storage class I created in the previous step. Now, let's run the deployment with the following kubectl command. As you can see, the PVC has been created with read-write-many access mode and the Nginx pod is up and running. If we navigate to the OneFS UI and click on the NFS shares, we can see that the export has been created and the worker node that is running the Nginx pod has access to it. Now, let's increase the number of pods in this deployment to 3 using the kubectl scale deployment and specify the number of replicas. As you can see, now we have 3 instances of the Nginx deployment and they are connected to the same persistent volume. Next, I will make sure that they can share data between each other. If we now navigate to the OneFS UI, we can see that all the three worker nodes have access to this export as each pod is running on a different worker node. Now, let's validate that the data is shared across all the pods that are mounted to the NFS share. To do this, I'm using the kubectl exec command to access the first pod and to create a file under the data directory. If we navigate to the OneFS UI, under the File System Explorer, we can see that the file has been created. Next, let's change the name of the pod and use the ls command to list the files in the slash data directory of a different pod. This shows that all pods share data using the same NFS directory on Parscale. The next feature I would like to show you is volume expansion. Starting from version 1.3, the CSI Parscale driver supports expansion of persistent volumes. This expansion is done online, that is, when a PVC is attached to a node. In order to use this feature, the storage class used to create the PVC needs to have the attribute allow volume expansion set to true, which is the default value for the Parscale storage classes. The PVC I created in the previous example is bound to the three pods. In order to expand the volume, all we need to do is run the kubectl edit PVC command and specify the relevant persistent volume claim. Then, go to the storage parameter, change it, and save the file. As you can see, both the PVC and PV have been automatically updated to the new size. The next feature is Volume Snapshot. Volume Snapshot feature in Kubernetes has moved to beta in Kubernetes version 117. This was an alpha feature in earlier releases. This feature allows you to create multiple copies of your persistent volumes, whether the use case is backup and protection or additional copies for test and dev clusters. Similar to the storage class, in Kubernetes we have an object called Volume Snapshot class, which is used to create snapshots from existing persistent volumes. In this example, I created a snapshot YAML called Snap2 and set the source of the volume to be the persistent volume claim I've just created in the previous example. Now, I'm creating it using the kubectl command, and within a few seconds, we can see that the snapshot is ready to use. If I navigate to the OneFS UI, select the data protection, and then click on Snapshot IQ tab, we can see that a new snapshot has been created from our existing volume. At this stage, we can create multiple copies of the snapshot and connect them to additional pods and workloads. I hope you'll find this demo useful and thank you very much for watching.